All right. Hi, everybody. My name is Nirvana. I'm a part of the GU Politics Student Leadership Council as a member of their Career Programming Committee. And today we're so excited to have Paulette Aniskov and Jenny Fay with us. Paulette served as Deputy Assistant to the President and Director of the White House Office of Public Engagement under the Obama administration, where she worked to make the government more accessible and transparent to the public. She then founded Citizen 44 LLC in early 2017, which oversees President Obama's engagement with political and progressive organizations and major supporters around the country. Jenny served as the Obama administration's director of White House personnel and special assistant to the president. She went on to become Geopolitics' very own director of fellows and career programming and is currently the chief operating officer for the App Citizen Congress, facilitating communication between representatives and their constituents. Please join me in welcoming Paulette and Jenny. Hey, everybody. Hi, everybody. It's so good to see you all. And thank you, um, Jew Politics, for having us. Um, I thought, Paulette, maybe you would like to start and maybe talk a little bit about one, your experience in getting into the administration, but then also because of that experience, what you learn and know about getting broader jobs in like the entire administration um, because of your PPO experience. Sure thing. Um, well, I, I got a, a job because I worked on the campaign um, and people knew exactly what I was good at from the Obama campaign and saw a job that was a really good match for me. Um, and I'll talk you through a little bit of, of, about what that looks like, but, um, I had the unique and in some cases, very grueling, uh, job, the first year of the white house of being a part of the personnel team, which is the team that works within the white house to choose who will go into the executive branch. So they sort of sift through the hundreds of thousands of resumes, look at the priorities, look at what the needs are cabinet agencies. So I got a really up close and personal look at the exact process because I was the person choosing people. Um, and so I, I'll lay out just a couple of uh, things that I think you wanna make sure that, that you do and some, some realistic numbers for you because it is really tough to get into the admin. Um, but I'd love to see a show of hands or maybe Zoom hands um, on how many people have filled out a formal application on whitehouse.gov or the transition.gov. Anybody? Oh, good, lots of hands, love that. <clears throat> good, well, um, you know, in five minutes, I mean, they got, that is the first step. You, you definitely can't be considered for anything unless you do fill something out. So if you go to, and you can literally Google whitehouse.gov, Biden administration jobs or that kind of thing, but it's on whitehouse.gov, which is yet yeah, now again, a lovely place to peruse. Um, it was in a, kind of bad shape for a little while there. Um, but it is uh, a website that you go in, you put the basics and what you're interested in, you upload your resume, go. So um, that's first step. But from what I understand, and this was true in the Obama administration, but actually even more so in the Biden administration, the number of people applying at every level has been off the charts. Um, there is such a commitment there to make sure that um, we get a really diverse, ready on day one, excellent group of people in the door. Uh, and they've done an amazing job. They're way ahead of where we were 12 years ago. And they really wanna make sure that there are roles that are you know, a good fit for various backgrounds and, and make that connection. Um, I will say when it comes to more of the junior level jobs, Biden campaign staff will generally get priority for those. And there were a few thousand of them. Um, and part of that is because someone we personally know in the White House at, at the time when I did it could personally recommend them and we knew what they were good at and that kind of thing. So there's like obviously a little bit of loyalty going on there, but also like someone you personally know can, can formally recommend them, which is great. So um, there are a few people talk about like thousands of jobs across the federal government. And that is sort of true, but also sort of not because a lot of them are like a specific scientist on a specific thing that five people in the world would be qualified for. And then you've got a few hundred sort of people who are assisting, putting together briefing books, um, helping be executive assistants to people, et cetera, et cetera. 
And there are a few hundred of those, but I think the volume is generally a little bit less than people assume. And that's because 99.9% .9 of the staff in the federal government is obviously career staff. They're there all the time. They're not political appointees. So how does PPO prioritize? I mean, it's really hard to do. You've got to work with the cabinet agency and see what they're looking for. Many of the cabinet secretaries, as you might imagine, have a longtime assistant they want to bring with them. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. I mean, it's, it's hugely competitive. Um, I would say, though, that when I was in PPO in 2009, it definitely took us a full year to get most of the positions staffed up. And that is generally what we're looking at here as well. So um, certainly it's not too late. Um, I would just say that the numbers are not are, are working against everybody at this point because it, it is um, it's a few hundred thousand people looking to get into a few hundred jobs. So um, a couple of things you you can take steps on. Um, the first is do a lot of homework. One really good thing that I think is just interesting intellectually and something that, that you should dive into is really understanding uh, what these federal agencies look like and do. And the easiest way I think to do that and, and to like connect it to jobs is to go through this horrible document that is a PDF existing if you Google it called the Plum Book. And it lists every single job in the federal government, not just political appointees, but some a, a, a portion of career. So it's not every single job, but a portion of career jobs as well. And if you roll through that, it teaches you how the government is actually set up in each agency. And people look at it and they're like, their eyes glaze over and it looks crazy. But if you can understand where the political appointee policy areas are and where they are not, it really helps you get a sense of how the agencies are constructed, which is A, just good to know as a citizen, be intellectually helpful as you think about all kinds of jobs, but C will be really good in your interview if you've got a really firm understanding of what an agency does. And, and it also feels like something you can kind of control yourself and like really dig into and take a look. So, um, but I would say that, you know, it'll also give you a sense of how many executive assistants there were going to be for people who are recent college grads. And it'll give you a better sense of, you know, where, where your interests lie. Um, so it, some people might be really interested in domestic policy. I know a lot of Georgetown students obviously do um, a lot of international policy. Uh, and, you know, you can scroll through and really get a sense of these. I would say to generally to be an assistant in the executive branch, someone's probably been an assistant before. Um, you know, my assistant in the White House was Susan Rice's assistant before she came to me. And before that, she was someone else's assistant, which is always the really hard thing is to break through and get that first job. But uh, finding, you know, either as you graduate or throughout ways to really get um, some experience is really helpful in part because the competition is just so fierce. Um, and again, campaign staff who were someone's assistant will, will very likely get a, get a shot at those first. Um, another thing that I think is really helpful, you want to obviously apply on the website, you want to dig through the plum book to understand the federal agency process, is if you've never served in the executive branch, which I assume that's true of all of you, you kind of want to just have a real sense of what you're getting yourself into with the restrictions and the vetting. And I know that sounds silly, but a lot of people struggle with this once they're actually through the interview process and close to a job. So there are a couple things. Um, this is true of internships too. If you have been deeply irresponsible on your social media, you will not get a job or an internship. <laughs> no one will ever tell you that, but the vetting folks, both for internships and for jobs, definitely vet your social media. So I just wanna flag that. That was not a problem for me because Facebook didn't exist when I was in college, but it is something you wanna think about. On top of that, there are a few other, a few other things and I will actually, um, send the link in the chat on like vetting and strange things that, that they have to look. If you've got, you know, and this, this happens to quite a lot of people, like, a, you know, you missed car payments for a long time, like odd little things that you would never know unless, unless you're looking. So I would be really just be careful on that. If you make it to the interview process, um, they are really looking for people who are dedicated, humble, and politically savvy. So being able to think and talk about those things in an interview is really important. Um, being flexible about taking any job is also really important. Uh, and 
just to put this out here as like what frame of mind you want to be in for an interview process and, and this process completely is that this is government service. Um, a huge percentage of young people when I interviewed them and still to this day do consistently turn the interview into a, a conversation about what they will get out of a job and what their career is going to look like. And I don't mean to be like overly forceful and overly blunt. Being the administration is amazing and being the administration will be great for any career, but that is not the mindset. No one cares at the moment. They need someone to help them solve problems. They are not worried about your future career. They are not worried about what you wanna do. They need someone who solves their problems and helps them serve. And it is called service because it is a time in your life and many people's lives where they are giving something up. You know, they're working a lot of hours, they're getting paid not very much. They're doing a job that's probably like a hair beneath or far beneath what they have the ability to do. And it's in order to serve and make our country a stronger place. So I just wanted to put that out there as sort of the, the mindset and I'm sure um, there are questions, but I would say in general for a college grad, chances are an internship are by far your best chance. And that will give you some of the experience you would need to then be hired later in the administration. So that's sort of tossing it over to Jenny, who's going to cover some of the intern stuff. Um, thank you, Paulette. I know that um, that is always, a, so Paulette and I have obviously had these conversations before and um, teed up for you guys what um, we were going to talk about. And I know that's hard to hear sometimes is that there are so few jobs, there are so few opportunities, um, but it's really because the best, best people have to get into those roles. And um, so I appreciate you being honest because it is it is really hard. Um, and a lot of it is right place, right time. And, you know, those opportunities. Um, but as Paulette said, a lot of what you can do as current college students, as recent grads, as graduate students are think about internships. Um, the, the, world is changing as far as internships go. A lot more opportunities are becoming stipends and paid and things like that. I'm not saying that I know of any that are currently paid, but um, but the landscape is changing. But a lot of folks that both Paulette and I were able to give their introductory opportunities um, into federal service um, were through former interns, people that we had as interns, people that were recommended to us who were interns, one of my really, really wonderful staff assistants at the end of the administration was an intern in OPE um, for, um, for Paulette and her team. So, um, so there are really, really meaningful ways to serve and to get kind of your foot in the door and get that experience that Paulette was talking about through internships. That's not just the White House internship program. There are federal internship programs across the board that are tremendous. They also can help be a stepping stone into career federal service, which I'm gonna talk about in a second because I don't wanna discount going into career federal service as a way to make a very, very big impact. Um, definitely, definitely. Right, especially right now. Um, so um, there are Hill internships, there are internships with organizations that are very deeply connected to this administration that um, you all should be thinking about. And as Paulette said, taking anything is really, um, taking anything that you believe you can give a tremendous amount to is a really, um, I think, powerful way to think about internships and any opportunity because it may not be you know, like, for example, Paulette started in presidential personnel. That's not what she does now. She has been President Obama's top political advisor for several years. Um, but she started in an office where she probably had interns doing presidential personnel, which no one really knows outside of the government what that does, right? No one knows what my office did. Um, but she has now moved on and done other things where she now knows those young people who she interacted with in those jobs and probably has been able to be helpful to them in the future. So when you think about these jobs, if it's an internship or a job in a department or an office you've never heard of, and you're like, I don't know about that. Just think about the fact that we all tend to move around into different places, but we all run in the same circle. So um, 
regardless of what the opportunity is, you can make a lot out of it and get a tremendous amount out of it while you're serving. So um, all of the agencies run their own internship programs. There's not, you can go through USA Jobs for some of them, but they're not like, there's not a one stop shop place to apply. So think about those departments you're interested in. The Plum Book can be really helpful in that um, as well. Think about Hill internships. Remember that a lot of, um, on the Republican and Democratic side, a lot of people who were in the administration are now on the Hill. A lot of people that are on the Hill will go into the administration. So those doors tend to go back and forth. But then also think about those organizations that are, as I said, connected with the administration. So places like Center for American Progress, um, where a lot of people go back and forth between, I mean, between the, the Obama administration and now, I had lots of friends who went into CAP and who now are gonna go back into the Biden administration. So um, think about those sorts of organizations. As far as being prepared for those internships, um, and I'll talk about the White House internship in just a second, so don't, I won't forget. Um, but the same thing that Paulette was talking about, don't forget your social media is incredibly important, even more so nowadays. So if you do have stuff on there, lock it down, make it hard to find, delete it. Um, we have dinged plenty of interns for those things. Get recommendations in order. This is gonna be true for the White House internship as well, but just getting as much ahead of time ready to go so that when those opportunities are available to you, you can jump on them is really helpful. So the White House internship program, it is a tremendous opportunity. I cannot speak highly enough of it um, in our administration. And um, from what I understand is going to be happening in this administration, it will continue to provide truly world-class opportunities to young people across the country um, who are interested in politics and public service. Um, it is currently not available. Um, just like in the Obama administration, we actually didn't offer an internship for the first two semesters um, because <laughs> It's a whole new team of people and they are standing up an entire administration and White House um, from scratch. We didn't have to do it in a pandemic and they are. And so it is a whole new ball game on how they're doing things. Um, and obviously this administration is taking the pandemic incredibly seriously um, in making their decisions. So my understanding is that the earliest an internship program would be uh, happening in the White House is fall of 2021, um, which means that they likely will put the application up sometime in the mid to late spring. The app is usually, um, the app usually closes about eight weeks before, eight to 10 weeks before the internship is scheduled to start because they have to actually onboard and vet and background investigate hundreds of people to go into those internships. So um, you should be, if you are interested in the internship program, you should be right now preparing your applications. Um, um, we sh uh, you should be working on preparing your applications, getting recommendation letters in order, making sure your resume is up to date, thinking about your um, you know, usually they ask for a personal statement or um, in our administration, it was, why are you dedicated to public service um, and getting those sorts of things in order. Um, I assume this administration's internship program will work very similarly to ours in that the vast majority of interns go through the internship application portal and do not have any sort of special privileges. There's not, you know, a whole bunch of nepotism happening. Um, so folk, that's good. That means that most people have a really, really good chance of um, being um, considered for those positions. I do believe this internship will be full-time, just like it was in our administration. Um, and I know in the past, because I ran the internship program in the Obama administration, that that was tricky for Georgetown students because Georgetown requires you to stay full-time as a Georgetown student in order to get your um, funding. So I don't know exactly how that'll work. I do know that it has, um, the Georgetown side has shown some wiggle room on that in the past administration. Um, so I do think that there may be work around that. 
Um, but also know that there are summer internship opportunities available as well, usually for the internship program. So um, I am super hopeful um, that they um, will, one, that COVID will start to look better and that they will be able to offer the, offer the opportunity, hopefully in person come the fall, um, but also that Georgetown students will be able to take advantage of um, the opportunity. So um, that's kind of the ins and outs of the internship office. I know that you probably all are also maybe wondering about working in the White House, um, which I will say is equally as hard as getting um, administration jobs. There's just very few of them. Um, it's just not a big place. It seems like, you know, that place would hold a lot of people and it really is actually a pretty small number of folks. Um, and similar to, <coughs> excuse me, similar to the administration <clears throat> and the federal agencies, it's a lot of people who have really specialized skill sets um, versus, you know, it's kind of generalist. So um, I do think that internships are one of the best ways to get your foot in the door. Every single staffer that I hired in the five years I worked there, which was several, at least a dozen, um, were former interns, either my intern or an intern from another office. Um, and if for nothing else, then they know how the building works and what the phones look like, it's incredibly helpful, but it also gives, that, gives you a really good sense of what the work is gonna be like and how that person handles that work. And it is the best job interview <laughs> those three months of the internship. And it doesn't mean you go immediately from the internship into a job. I had interns who were interns in 2010 and 11 that I didn't hire until 2014 um, because they stayed connected with the folks that um, they did their internships with. I should add that as a point. Any internship you have, I hope that you um, have connected with that person, whoever your supervisor was on LinkedIn, and you have stayed in contact with them. Because again, remember that the opportunities that you have already taken advantage of or that you will take advantage of in the next couple of years will set you up for getting potential jobs in the future. Just because you don't get that immediate job at the beginning of the administration when everyone else is hunting for jobs doesn't mean in two or three years, those jobs won't be open again and the opportunities won't be available. Um, as Paulette mentioned, a lot of folks who do um, their kind of introductory entry-level jobs tend to have had other positions in other places before coming into either the White House or other places of federal service. That means you're not going to be 22 and, you know, Susan Rice's uh, assistant in DPC. You may be 26, 27, 28 and working in those entry-level jobs um, simply because they need people who have that breadth of experience that you just can't get when you're 22. So I say that because I don't want you guys to think if at you get out of undergrad, you don't get the job in the administration and you're never gonna get in. A lot of these positions do require a pretty significant amount of work experience in order to do them. Some of them require security clearances and things like that as well, which just don't happen overnight. And so, um, Keep at it. Don't stop just because you don't get that first job. Keep at it. We need really dedicated, um, excited people to continue to work in this administration and hopefully the next Democratic administration and other places that are um, excited about these sorts of policies. So keep at it. Um, my plug for federal service is that, you know, these are the people who are in career civil service jobs. They do not leave when the administrations change but they have a tremendous amount of experience, know-how and um, uh, kind of sway when an administration comes in and it's a policy they've been working on or a new policy that the administration wants them to work on. So just because it's a career federal service job or it's an internship on the, I mean, internships are not gonna be on the career side, but you're thinking like, oh, I don't really wanna go do an internship at an agency. I wanna go be in the political side doesn't mean you wouldn't have a very, very large impact. The career staff that I have worked with over the years are very good about not making it well known, perhaps what their political leanings are when you're in the administration um, and are very good about that. 
but they have a tremendous amount of impact on the decisions that I made in the White House because they have experience that I never could have had because they've been working there for six or eight or 10 years before I ever came into the administration. So keep in mind that even if you get a career civil service job, you can still have a very, very big impact on what the administration is working on. And um, those jobs are hard to get. Getting into federal career service is a great way to think about your long-term career track as well, because it sets you up to kind of move through the system, which is really tremendous. But also those people do leap back and forth. I worked with people who became political appointees who were career federal service and went back and forth. Um, and as long as it's happening in an above board way, um, it's a really great, um, really great way to work in the broader world of public service. So um, those are kind of the big points that I wanted to make sure to drive home. I think the stuff that Paulette hit on about being prepared to be vetted and you will have to take a drug test and think about those sorts of things are also, you know, incredibly valid. Um, and you guys do have the luxury of obviously being here in DC, so you can take advantage of a lot more stuff um, while you're here. And that includes everything from, you know, I'm gonna give geopolitics a big mad plug right now from being really connected to the fellows who are um, often people like Paulette who uh, worked in the administration, have lots of insight and connections um, and also can help you think through what your, you know, what your goals are and how you can best serve um, this administration. So with that, I know there are some questions. Um, I am happy to monitor the chat for questions. And then also, um, Zach, did you wanna? I was gonna say, that's okay. I can do that, okay. Jenny, don't worry about it. Okay. I'll monitor the, uh, so if you all have questions for Jenny and Paulette, they're here to answer them. So please either, you know, drop it in the chat, use the raise hand function, and I will just, you know, call on them as I see them in, no, in the, you know, order as they come. Great, I, I already see a hand shooting up from Gloria. So let's go right to Gloria. Hi, thank you so much for these insights. Um, I was wondering about the White House internship program and what you mentioned with the kind of two semester delay where they were getting the programs up and running. Do you know if that applies to the other executive offices too? For example, like OSTP or um, CEA or other offices like that? So yes. that's a great question. I do believe so. Those internships are gonna be run separately through each of those um, executive office um, agencies. So the only one, so the two that are connected are the White House office and the vice president's office. Those are run as one single program. And then OSTP, ONDCP, CEA, OMB all run their own internship programs because they are a different type of federal service than the White House office and the vice president. So I do think that they probably will take a little bit of time to get up and running. If for nothing else, then I know this administration is taking COVID so seriously that they are very, very limiting on who is in the building and how people are in the building. And so um, they want to offer the opportunities to students as best as they possibly can. But I can tell you in our administration, we didn't give our, um, what was I guess? we didn't give our interns access. So you can't work from home as a White House intern because you don't get a computer or a Blackberry you have to physically be on campus in order to do that. So um, so I, I think other agencies are probably in the similar boat. Paulette, do you know if any of the other um, EOP offices have started to offer anything? I haven't heard about it. it they will not, they will not. Okay. All right, thanks, that's a great question. Uh, next, uh, we will go to Susanna. Hi, thanks guys so much for coming. Um, I was just wondering if you're looking to get a job at a specific agency, should you, is it normal that there's basically nothing entry level on USA jobs right now? Like what does the timeline for that look like? When yeah, you say so, timeline, explain, explain what you mean. Like that, that there might be one day entry level that yeah. are there? So basically USA jobs has like nothing right now. And I'm wondering mm -hmm. if you think that that's because the administration is still getting going or are there just no entry level jobs? I, I mean, in general, occasionally they'll have hiring freezes, but it it just like cycles and changes and each agency is so different. 
Um, so I, I think to be honest, there's no one answer because each agency is just going to have its different funding cycle and everything. And it, I think just, you just got to keep looking. It, it is really tough. And it's sort of like, there are moments when there's a lot and moments when there's nothing for, for months. So it's hard to have one answer for that. Thanks. Uh, so we have a question in the chat from Nicolette. Uh, I will turn to Nicolette. Yeah, um, I asked this in the chat too. Hi, just thank you so much. And my question was, what's the most common type of work experience um, the people that you accept have, whether it's nonprofits or um, Capitol Hill or something of that sort? So I'm going to be a rebel and say there's not really one most common type of experience. Um, I have one had staff and interns from a wide variety of places, whether they have had previous ex internship experience on the Hill or in nonprofits. Um, I think the best advice is to have experience in general. Um, and it's perhaps not the places, but rather the types of experiences. So um, I've had really great campaign staff who have come and worked for me. Um, I've had really great Hill interns and I've had really great people who have had internships in really, really random places. For me, um, the biggest thing that, or the couple of biggest things I always looked for was one, your dedication to public service, as Paulette mentioned. So your excitement for the really mundane, crampy tasks that you're gonna have to do, that we all have to do, um, your interest in staying in politics and public service as like a career and not just a stepping stone into something else. Um, your customer service skills. So I worked in an office that was internal facing. 99.8% of everything I did was facing inside. And so my customers were Paulette. And I knew that um, I needed to make sure that my staff was incredibly good at how they worked with others because the last thing I ever wanted was for my staff to be like disgruntled or annoyed at something that another office was doing. And that got to Paulette's boss. And then that got back to my boss. And then I never wanted to hear that because that would have been bad. So um, for me, customer service skills were incredibly vital. So what that meant was even if someone didn't have 10 political internships and connected to a whole bunch of people, if they had worked at a department store in the customer service office and had to deal with disgruntled customers all day long and had to answer a phone all day long and reply to people in a way that I felt like, in a way that I knew they had to work really hard to stay calm and level-headed and um, be a really good interface. That was an experience that I thought was really important. So. I think it totally depends on the office. And Paulette was in a very, very different office than me. So she probably has different thoughts on this. But for a lot of what I did, having folks that could, had really good interpersonal skills and really good communication skills um, and really good critical thinking, problem solving skills were much, much more important to me than did they check the box and work in a specific place before they came and worked for me. Paulette, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the chances of someone getting any job in Ledge Affairs without some Hill experience is sure. probably zero. Um, my office ran campaigns for the federal government out of the White House. Probably without campaign experience, it's actually going to be hard um, to do. Um, so I think, you know, each office has something that, that they're seeking out, which is why, I mean, like we said before, I do think a White House internship and, and to answer you know, also the question in the box of, is it possible to get a role in the White House without a connection? The truth is the White House internships are set up to make sure that they are a fair system of looking for the best and the brightest. Whereas a job, generally they're looking for someone who can give a direct reference on exactly what that person's good at. And, and that person will generally, even for a, an, an assistant position, have a ton of experience somewhere. So it doesn't mean that we're necessarily, it's about a political connection so much, 
but about a strong reference connection um, because you are held responsible for whether that person <laughs> succeeds or not. So you want to make sure that they've they've basically done the job before, um, particularly when they, it's this competitive. So I would say um, yes and no. That's why White House internship is such a great a great way, and the agency internships, which are tremendous. Thank you. Sure thing. Great. So well, thank you for that question. We'll go to Catherine next. Hi. Um, good morning, everybody. Thanks so much for hosting this, uh, Zachary and team. Um, my question is, I'm um, an older student. I'm in a, an executive uh, policy program. I've had um, a full career in public service of a slightly different sort. I'm a social worker. Um, and I'm, I happen to have two other colleagues from my program on this call. And so my question is about um, older applicants who have very robust experience and full careers and we're making some form of a pivot, not necessarily like we sure. were bank tellers for 20 years and are sure. now, but <laughs> sure. you know, um, so uh, like the yeah. two other women on the call are just dynamos. So the question is like, what advice do you have for us in this kind of, um, you know, sure. more a, a different type mm -hmm. of transition? I mean, this is going back to the plum book thing of really digging in and saying, where exactly does my expertise fit in? And, you know, I'll give you two examples. Um, I know that I'm a, a woman that came to me recently with an amazing background on pandemics. And she said, I really want to work in ASPR and HHS, which is um, basically the emergency public health office. And I said, awesome. There are two roles there, the director and her assistant. You do not have the experience to be the director. You are way beyond being the assistant. You actually will fit best going through the career route if that is, because it's a huge office, but there's only two political appointees and neither one is a good fit for you. So I think it's about you getting really granular and saying, okay, I do health policy or I do international policy, digging into those specific areas with those specific offices, breaking down, okay, what are the five offices that I'd be really excited about working in and my expertise really lends to? Then what are the jobs available in there? Am I actually a fit? You can Google the person, the last five people who had it. It's all public information, right? So I think it's about doing homework and then um, it, applying with those specific agencies in mind and those kind of notes in mind and a cover letter that says, these are the five jobs that I'd be really excited about for a political appointee role. Um, and basically the more people have expertise, the more PPO kind of determines a, a you know, a analytic search function, basically. Like we had positions that we filled that were specific for policy areas and you will do a search for certain, and the federal government does this too, um, making sure that you're doing a search your resume and cover letter would match a sort of word search that they would be seeking out for career or for um, the White House uh, agency jobs, both of those. So I, I really think it's about homework and figuring out exactly where you think you would land and, and what would be good, but that requires some time. And it also requires, in some cases, it, it would be really helpful to see, you know, anyone who has worked in HHS and talking to them about exactly how those offices work with each other, where you might fit in. I just keep going to health because that one's on my mind, but I don't know what your background is, but, but I, I think it's about plum book, making sure you apply, digging in, making sure your cover letter and resume have like what you would assume would be on a keyword search, and then looking for someone who might have a connection um, that can introduce you as someone who's, who's interested. I'd say the more specialized, it's like a little bit of a double-edged sword because some people they're really looking, there are only so many people who are a good fit for the FDA, for as example, uh, as an example, and, and they can find those people certainly, but it's also a pretty specific job. So um, it, it also depends on how specialized your policy area is. And I'm happy to talk through if you, if one of you want to give your policy area and I can maybe give an example. Along I hope that helps. <laughs> Thank you. That's super helpful. I appreciate it. Sure. Jenny, don't let me stop you from answering. Too. No, you're fine. <laughs> I just wanted to add and, and re-emphasize this because I do think the networking piece on both 
career and political jobs are helpful. I mean, career yeah. jobs are are supposed to be completely blind and done in a way that you know you you apply through USA jobs and then it's this black hole that you don't really know what happens um, next. But I do think that um, to help yourself with that research and also to help you with making connections and, and getting to know the landscape is um, one, taking advantage of this amazing network you have at Georgetown of um, yes. you know students and programs and alums who um, can't tell you how many times I, when I was at geopolitics, I would email someone and ask them to connect with a student and instantaneous email back. You guys have a really great opportunity here in DC to take advantage of that network. But then also, I'm sure you have an actual, you, you probably don't think so, but you probably have a really great network of people um, that can also help you start to think through who do they know and who can they connect you with. DC is just a small town um, and it's um, really pretty amazing once you start to look up, you know, whether through LinkedIn or through other social networks, how you know people. Um, that there are lots of opportunities to have, you know, right now informational Zooms, um, but have those conversations with folks um, and get to get to know, you know, what the, the landscape is and who they might know and be willing to um, help connect you with as well. Absolutely. I, I think, I mean, LinkedIn is the most magical, magical tool. And I actually can't believe I forgot to bring it up, but um, I mean, I am drowning right now in LinkedIn messages from hundreds of people asking me to talk about this topic. Um, so, uh, but I, I do think when you personally know someone, you should make the ask to either be connected to someone or, uh, I mean, we, if you just look in LinkedIn for a little while and use the search terms of the policy area and you're one or two people away from someone, you can figure that out. And, and it really does help to get good context about how the agency looks from the inside, what someone might think they'd be looking for, if they know someone's still on the inside. You know, clearly tons of Obama people went into the Biden administration, like a huge number. Um, the, the folks who have a connection, anyone who's been in government for the last 10 years, likely is one person removed from a lot of people in government currently. So um, I, would, I would utilize that in a big way. LinkedIn is very magical. It's not always been here and it's wow. a great tool. Love LinkedIn. Oh my gosh. It is incredibly helpful. Um, and just such a great way for you to keep track of the contacts that you have. Yeah. Um, and do it in a way that's not, you know, the Instagram, Twitter world that, you know, can be much more um, personalized and political. This is a very like professional network to be able to keep track of um, and is honestly the way that I keep track of all of my networking stuff and um, is just a, a wonderful tool. And if you're interested in why Jenny loves LinkedIn so much, she has a great workshop on our <laughs> so Politics no, YouTube, <laughs> YouTube page called <laughs> Leveraging Your LinkedIn. So if you want to learn more about how you can leverage your LinkedIn, go visit our page, watch that wonderful workshop. She does a great job um, and you'll learn even more. Uh, so thanks for that great question, Catherine. Uh, we will go now to Kenna. Hi, Jenny and Paula. Thank you both so much for being here. I really sure. enjoyed just hearing about all your expertise and ways to get into the administration. Um, briefly, my name is Kenna. I graduated in 2020 in May, um, so very interesting time. Um, and I'm currently working as a paralegal looking to get into health. I'm particularly interested in the White House internship, and you've both alluded to specific skill sets versus journalism. Um, and so my, I think my specific question is, for me personally, I have been a disability advocate for the last five years. And I know that within the DPC, there has been a new role specifically around the director of disability policy. So that would be an interest area for me, um, potentially, if I were to be an intern. However, for the purposes of the internship application, would you recommend that I talk more about my interest and my work in that area? Or do you think it would be better for me to frame myself more as a generalist? So perhaps in health policy or of the White House internship? So usually the internship office um, in the application asks for like your top five department choices. And so you kind of rank choice, you know, if it's DPC and then OPE, 
um, because they usually have someone who's also um, related to disability yeah. advocacy um, mm -hmm. and then kind of go down from there. I would recommend um, to anyone who's applying, please list all of them. Do not think if you only list one that that ups your chance of being in that department. It makes it harder to place you because if you pick a department that is super popular and you don't have the necessary right fit, it's hard to then go and put you in another department for them to review their, your application if you're if you don't list anything. Um, and oftentimes we just wouldn't go further with that intern application. So please list all of those. I would though um, would recommend that you in your cover letter or whatever application they ask you to fill out, usually a couple of short answer questions. Do talk about your your passion for a specific policy if you have one, if you have experience in it. Um, because it shows that you have one, a passion and some, maybe a little bit of expertise, um, but also that that's a policy area that is important to this administration, regardless of whether it's in DPC or OP. I can tell you in my, um, larger department m &A, we actually spent a tremendous amount of time working on creating better infrastructure in the White House around disability advocacy. So things like um, having interpreters at events, having um, uh, accessible um, building codes right. in a building right. that is 250 years old, a year old, and doesn't have you know proper exits for people um, with disabilities. So even in departments like that, you can make yeah. a tremendous impact, um, and you get the internship, right? Getting the internship, whether it's an M&A or DPC is going to get you into a small select group of individuals mm -hmm. who then form a community with people and um, have you know, a lot of opportunities. So I think that listing out what your expertise or your interest area is, is helpful and important and gives you a, a personality beyond, I'm just willing to do anything, but then be willing to do anything. Agreed. I, I do think it would really make you stand out in your application. And that itself, I think, is really important because there's a million smart kids. No offense to all you smart kids, but there are a million smart kids applying. So how do you make yourself stand out beyond the fact that you've had a lot of um, academic achievement? Um, that's a great one. Perfect. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks for that great question. Um, so we have another question in chat um, from Abrar. I don't know if she is you, did you answer that question? No, no, sorry. Okay. I was giving Paulette I... <laughs> Okay, sorry. Um, so Abrar, if you're on uh, and you would like to ask it, go ahead. If not, I can read it. Um, I'll give you a second. Thanks, yeah, I can ask it. Um, okay. First of all, thank you ladies for the information. This is really useful and uh, I'm grateful for your time. I mean, my, my question really um, is, is around whether it's even possible to kind of get some of those White House jobs without connections and it's, it's, I mean, it's obviously daunting, like you're just kind of a, a thing in a pile and there are hundreds and thousands of them. So it's, it's just a question of, um, you know, how realistic is that just to manage our own expectations? Um, and then I guess building up those connections, if you can comment on that too, would be useful. I, I think, like I mentioned before, getting a White House internship, you definitely don't need a connection for. And I think that that is one really great route. I think getting a White House job it is a very, very slim chance that without being an intern or, or having a reference that directly knows, and even in that case, it, it's quite hard, in part because they've got you know, a couple hundred jobs and 3,000 campaign staff that uh, they already know the references for, and it's a committed, diverse, well-educated group. So they are gonna get priority, and so the math just does not work in people's favor to, to get a job right away. That being said, you know, um, I think a people that continue to stay in touch with a, a personnel office and over the years, the right thing pops up because you either have a specialty or you followed up and are on someone's mind in that office. But this, I mean, statistically, the chances are quite small. Um, and that's why we wanna give the options of White House internship, agency internship, career job, political appointee job. I would say go for everything. 
and just kind of keep following up and um, and see if it if it works out. So Paulette brought up a point um, that I wanted to note. I don't know what the specific policy that this administration will adopt on their internship program, but in our administration and in the previous administration, um, so the Trump administration, um, we allowed for the following groups of people to serve as White House interns. You are either in some sort of college experience, whether that be a two-year or a four-year program, you are in some sort of graduate school experience, or you are two years or less out of any of those programs. So that could be two years out of graduate school, two years out of a PhD program, two years out of undergrad. And we counted that, our administration did, from your graduation date. So um, I do want to note that I don't know that this administration will do the same thing, um, but chances are it will be something similar and they will allow recent grads. Oh, you can also have served um, two years or I think it was two years out of military service as well um, in our administration. But um, I don't know that they'll do the exact same thing, but if they do something similar, it doesn't mean that just because you've gotten out of undergrad or your grad program that you will be ineligible for the internship program. Um, and um, there are other, not in the White House, but other places that do some sort of fellowship program. So there are, if you are interested in a specific policy area, um, I know people that have served in, you know, kind of fellows programs, whether it be through some sort of nonprofit organization or a advocacy organization that then get to rotate into places like the Hill or in various agencies. And that's also a way to think about getting a connection and getting your foot in the door to get those additional connections um, that can be helpful in thinking, you know, down the road, what else you like to be doing. Um, so don't just think if I don't get an internship, then there's no other opportunities for me. There are lots of other ways um, outside of even working full time that can help um, with those programs. Things like the Presidential Management Fellows Programs, PMFs, um, is also something if you're a graduate student and thinking about being in, um, in a career, remember that, uh, or not remember, you all probably wouldn't know this, sorry. Um, if you get into a career federal job and say you have an expertise in something, there are programs that allow you to be detailed to go and work for several months in various other places, whether that be in another agency or in places like the White House. And there are people that once they had those detailee opportunities from their career job, ended up coming and working um, in our administration in a political capacity as well. So um, I think the bottom line is go and serve wherever you can serve because yeah. um, you will make an impact regardless of what the position is. Um, and um, that there are lots and lots of different ways to do that. Fantastic. So I don't see any other questions in the chat and we have just under four minutes left in this conversation. So I will, uh, oh, so do you have time for one more question? We have another hand raised. Yeah. Okay, let's go again, Nicolette. Uh, yeah, this is my second question. Um, thanks for answering my last one. But this one is about like, is there a preference for someone older? Um, for example, would you see yourself hiring like a college sophomore or something? Or what matters more is, is it the experience, particularly for the White House internship? Yeah, so um, only in our administration, only very rarely would we ever take a college freshman um, simply because they don't have really any experience usually. Um, so I can't think of a single freshman that I ever saw come in um, in the five years I, I was there. One, by the way. Yes, yes, yes. So I'm just saying as a, <laughs> as a freshman, that would be very rare. There certainly were lots of sophomores and they're on out. Um, I don't, I wouldn't say it's a specific, um, no to answer your question. There's not a one size fits all. Yeah. Um, I don't think there's a specific, like, you know, it's best to be a junior or a senior. That certainly is not oh. the case. I think your, your enthusiasm and your dedication to public service, having a little bit of experience. Um, like I said, I don't think that many offices, regardless of what the position was, are going to bring in an intern that has never answered a phone before, has never, you know, worked in a desk job. Um, 
in some sort of capacity. I know we always, when we were sorting interns and, and parsing them out for departments, um, you know, tried to make sure that the, in, that the candidates at least had some sort of office experience, right? Um, it's hard to go from being a camp counselor to sitting in a White House office desk and working that schedule and um, those sorts of experiences. And so having some office experience, whether that be, you know, in another internship or in a part-time job over the summer, you know, um, as a paralegal or something like that, those um, as a full-time job, I'm sure. But um, those sorts of experiences um, are really helpful to know that that person can manage the office environment. Um, you know, you have to be able to send really well-crafted emails. You have to be able to interface um, really well with people. So um, it's not, again, those specific experiences, but a lot of those skill sets. Um, but if you think about the, the types of things you're gonna be doing in a White House internship job, and I know that there's nothing up on the website right now, but you should be able to, to get a sense of what the Obama administration did at least, look back at the Obama White House archives and there should be the application, not link um, because it was a company that I don't know that they contract with anymore, but, um, but there should be a, a landing page to talk about what all the departments do. Um, I hope that still exists, um, we worked hard on it. Um, so you can get a good sense, the departments in the White House by and large have not changed between our, from between the Obama administration and the Biden administration. So what OPE does, while it may look different in how the department is split up and who runs it and where the hierarchy is, by and large is gonna do the same thing or similar things. So you can get a really good sense based on the, the departments you're interested in working for what each department does and glean from that the skill sets that the, you might need, right? So as Paulette mentioned, if you wanna go and work in legislative affairs, OLA is going to wanna know that you can do research on legislative issues. They're gonna to wanna to know that you have a know-how of the people and the players on political hill. They're gonna to wanna to know that you can quickly take complex legislative issues and delineate them down. They're gonna to wanna to know that you have an, ex well, everyone's gonna to know, you have an extreme attention to detail, but you're gonna to need to be able to do that from a legislative side as opposed to you know, what um, maybe communications does from a public facing side and things like that. So take a lot of what you have, um, what you see on that site and you can hopefully delineate down um, what those skills would be. And then think about how you can get those experiences in other opportunities now and in the more recent future to then, you know, remember the internship, pro the internship runs th hopefully three times a year for the next four years. So it doesn't mean today you have to be a White House intern. You could still have a really fruitful, amazing internship program in a year or two, um, if that works in your schedule. Um, to give you those experiences. Does that help? Yes, thank you so much. All right, well, that just about does us for time today. Uh, Zach, I did see one question that's in okay. the chat that I, I think might be helpful um, okay. about expectations for the pandemic. Yeah, let's hear um, it. It's a really good question and one that is hard to answer um, because this is just the first time all of us are still going through this. So the question is whether or not the pandemic has changed expectations in previous work experience. Um, I do think that it probably has changed internships and the fact that it is hard to do internships right now um, from home. Um, I don't think the White House is going to, I think the White House is gonna be hard pressed to not still look for people who have the best experience possible um, and have a, a good amount of experience and have a good amount of passion for public service. So thinking creatively about other things you can do to market yourself as a really good candidate, whether that be you know, really good campaign experiences that you've had or other volunteer type experiences, um, 
because they're still going to need the top people and they're, and that's hard to find um, regardless of the pandemic. Um, so I think it's a really good question. I think it, it, it has changed your work experience, but I don't know yet exactly how at least the White House internship program will look at those change, this change in landscape in considering interns. Um, Paulette, what do you think as far as other positions? Yeah, I, I think it's just hard to tell at the moment. Um, there are some people who are just going to have experience regardless of the pandemic. And um, since it is a numbers game, it, it may be the case that, that they still kind of can proceed on and, and find people who do. So hard, hard to know, truly. Hey, thank, thank you so much for that great question, Tova. Very timely and very uh, relevant. So now I believe that's all the questions. Sorry for trying to end early. Did not mean to do that. Um, thank you all for joining us today. Um, it's been a great session. We really appreciate So first off, thank you so much to Jenny and Paulette for giving us an hour of their time uh, to come speak with everyone. Uh, for those interested in re-watching this, there will be a recording on our YouTube channel put up sometime, I believe, early next week. So if you want to go back, you know, re-watch some of this to hear more about, you know, the questions that you may have missed or want to, you know, reflect on, please feel free to visit our YouTube channel and watch it there. Um, and if you have any questions about GU Politics Program, Programming or career programming, please feel free to reach out to me. Um, you can, my net ID is ZR84. So shoot me an email and I'd be happy to connect with you all. Um, with that being said, thank you all so much for joining us today. And I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Bye, Bye everybody. Thank you. <laughs>